It's windy today. Winds of change. So, I want to talk about the commitment to self-care. The commitment to love yourself. Uh, it's not selfish to love yourself. It's smart to love yourself. Uh, I think that there's an idea that people often have that, you know, that self-love, self-care um, is narcissistic. It's not. Uh, everyone, every human being needs to feel loved and cared for in their own unique way. When we put others first, we actually create a dynamic where because everyone, because we all need to feel loved, we will uh, subconsciously try to make pe other people ful fulfill our needs. And I know that's a bit of a deep dive from the commitment to self-care, but it's, I, I ha you know, I grew up with the service mentality and, you know, putting other people's needs first and a lot of people grow up with, with that, where it's better to serve others. The smart thing about serving yourself first is that you can keep on serving. It's sustainable. When you're, when you're not true to yourself, when you're giving, uh, you know, when you're putting other people first, like eventually you're going to run, em run empty. And so I probably, well, I feel like stories and modeling is the most important way to share information. So I'm going to share my story for that purpose. The reason is that I don't know what your self-care situation is like. I, I just know that as human beings, we do need to feel loved and cared for. And when I got to my very rock bottom, I didn't have the energy to care for others. I mean, I could barely care for myself. I was severely depressed. Uh, I looked like I was dying, literally. Like my, my face was like, uh, like I had har hardly any color left. I could barely recognize myself in the mirror. I was just so, so depleted. And I want to share my story and what I discovered to help anyone else who maybe is feeling depleted or um, is on their way to feeling depleted. And the first step it's just making that commitment to love yourself. And when you, when you don't love yourself, or you've gotten to a point like I did where you, part of you just like hates yourself so much, it's very hard to, to accept um, the idea that you're gonna love yourself. So one thing I noticed or I realized was that to love is to know. And so all, you, you know, if, if love feels like almost like poisonous to you or like, uh, you know, you've had such bad experiences with it, just think of it as exploring. Like you just got to understand this thing. You just got to know. And when you, when you seek to know, you know, that can come from a painful place. It's like, oh my God, this hurts so bad. I have to understand it. You know, that's love. And, and it's, and it's going to flow into everything. There's some power and curiosity that will take you very far. So 
I haven't Googled the definition of love for a while, but I remember a while back thinking like, Google doesn't have a very good definition of love. Um, you know, it's like affection and stuff like that. Uh, romance, that's the typical explanation of love. But to me, love is uh, intelligence. It's the ability to be with something. And the deeper the love is, the more you can be with things. And so then the deeper your love is for yourself, the, the more you can be with other people too. And so it actually, you know, it's like a feedback loop that when we turn things around and we start to truly love ourselves and be curious about ourselves and accept what is, you know, our whole world opens up. Our, and, and it's, but it starts in the mind. Actually, I mean, it starts in the heart, but sometimes our hearts are so, you know, filled with so much, so much pain and sadness, or maybe we've been through trauma. Um, and that might look like different things. Uh, you know, tr trauma looks different for everybody. It's, it's very personal, but, um, you know, some people say that we've all been through trauma of some kind. And from my perspective on a consciousness level, like globally, we are, we are purging trauma from the past, from our ancestors, from, cause we're all connected. You know, we are, we're connected through air. We're connected through, um, through things that we can't even see things that we're not educated about because you know society is still very externally focused although if you if if you notice like in in recent times there's more and more awareness of health and wellness you know we went from like the terrible dark ages of humanity and it's, it's constant growth, you know, it's ebb and flow, but there's, there's constant evolution. So now we're becoming more aware of the importance of emotional intelligence and that is one of the things on my journey that I realize is really at the, the foundation of self care. It starts with the commitment though, to care for yourself and it's my sincere desire to help as many people as possible to not get so depleted like I did and if you are that depleted where you're just hanging by a thread just make the commitment to care for yourself in this one minute you know, just be with yourself. Just look at yourself almost, almost if you have to do it from an observer mind, which is actually a really powerful, um, just, just look at yourself as if you're another person looking at yourself and just be curious about what's going on. But it's just that, that commitment to be with yourself that is extremely powerful. And I'll do another video. I mentioned in another video that I was going to do a video about emotional processing that that's been helping me. And when I got to a point where I was processing some deep grief and trauma again, because it, you know, it comes in waves and I, I had this, this, uh, this moment the other day on a walk where I was like, you know, what if life is not, or life is not necessarily about feeling good. It's about being good at feeling. But I got to a point where I was processing really deep grief and I hadn't been able to because I'd been in survival mode. And you know, when you're in survival mode, you're just focusing on surviving. But once you start to get into a safe space, then maybe things will come up because the body is trying to heal on a deeper level. So once again, I found myself in that position to make that commitment to be with myself no matter what. 
and I was afraid. I was so stressed out, feeling such, such big feelings that I was like, oh my God, I feel like I'm going to go insane. And then I was like, and even if I go insane, I'm going to be there for myself. I'm going I'm to be there in the craziness. I will not abandon myself. I will not abandon. I will not abandon my feelings. I will not abandon who I am. And even if I do temporarily abandon who I am because I'm so afraid, I'm going to be with that too. So that's the first step. And it's so powerful because after that, the, you know, all the healing practices and modalities, like, you know, like the world is your oyster, or the buffet, there's a buffet of so many practices that you could, that you will find that are really, really going to be meaningful for you once you make the commitment to care for yourself. And maybe you've already made that commitment to care for yourself. And so you know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you had it, haven't, or you want to renew that commitment, you know, go ahead and do that. Like right now, I think that it's such a powerful act of love and something that we can also model for our children and for others who may be struggling in the same way. Because we can talk and share all of the, you know, the techniques and strategies, but modeling that, like when you're around somebody who really genuinely loves and accepts themselves, you're going to feel that. And I think one of the, well, for me, one of the most important things I wanted for my son was to have the freedom to be himself, you know, not to be what I wanted him to be, not to be what anyone wanted him to be, but just to have the freedom to be himself. And I think that's the greatest gift that we can give to other people. And we can really only give that to people as if we've given it to ourselves. And then it's a work in progress though. It's a lifelong thing to commit to self-care, but when we commit to self-care, then we can, then we can commit to other care. Because what I realized at that rock bottom moment when I could not care for others and I felt like my worth was dependent on how I could care for others, I realized, well, caring is a practice. Love is a practice. And if I can love myself, then I can love others better. And so that's the message for this video. I, I, I have a blog that you can check out and subscribe to. It's mikohargett.com, M-I-K-O-H-A-R-G-E-T-T.com. And that is also a work in progress. I started it when I was going through cancer and part of my self-care was to really allow allow my true self to emerge and i had just become so afraid of being myself and afraid of who i might have become or you know afraid of saying the wrong things that i got this practice of being able to just attune to my environment to a certain extent i think the the true self is always going to emerge at some point at least for me, like I had this rebel that would come out sometimes, but that was usually in when I was very pressed and otherwise I would default to trying to assess like, okay, what, what, which Miko should show up now? And it was, it became automatic because I was just so afraid to be me. And so where was I going with that? Um, okay, so I, one of the things I started doing, because I, at the time I didn't have resources for, you know, self-care services, self-care pra practices. I didn't even know how to look for that. And self-care was a term that came, you know, that I learned later. But love was what I kept thinking. Like, okay, I need to love myself. I need to know myself. Because if I don't, then who will? 
And then how am I going to be my best if I can't even take care of myself? I'm, you know, like basically hovering between life and sanity right at that point. So I thought, okay, I have my phone. And part of knowing something is to look at it, right? And I had gotten to a point where I couldn't recognize my face in the mirror. And so I thought, okay, I need to look at myself. And so I started to, and it, you know, felt, I was pretty scared to do it at first because I, you know, I, I didn't feel like I looked good. I hated myself. And so I looked at myself, started looking at myself and then started taking selfies. And the selfies were not selfies to show people like what an awesome life I was living. It felt like shit. The selfies were to show myself who I was. And so I started taking selfies anytime I felt like it. And the intention was that anytime I felt like it was basically sometime when I needed to see myself. And I needed to see myself when I was sad. I needed to see myself when I was scared. I needed to see myself when I was happy. I needed to see myself in all the, the moments I could. And that through that, I would be able to start to connect with myself in a different way. Instead of just listening to what other people said about me. And this was a long process, you know, so I'm, uh, but I'm going to, I feel like because I've been going through this for so long, I can condense some of the things I've learned over the past decade plus in just doing this over and over again. I have like thousands upon thousands of selfies where I'm just raw And in that moment, I'm depressed, I'm hysterical, like all those things, because we, we deserve to be loved in any state. And if we want others to love us in any state, we have to love ourselves in those states. Um, You know, that comes back to the self care, like, and, and service to others. I think that if we don't show up for ourselves deeply, we still carry that need. And then what happens is we subconsciously try to manipulate others into giving us the needs that we are not meeting ourselves because no one taught us how. You know, that's not part of society's offerings. Like, we don't get that education. It's more like, okay, what are you gonna, you know, what are you gonna do for the world? Who are you gonna be? But that comes from knowing yourself deeply. So, It's never too late though. Every moment is a moment to commit to loving yourself more deeply and setting other people free to love themselves more deeply. And when we love ourselves deeply, we start to see unique things that that other people are not able to see, Um, especially if they're hidden because we're ashamed of them or we feel, you know, we feel bad for whatever reason. So I think a lot of the creativity uh, that we bring as unique individuals is going to be unleashed as more and more of us start to get curious about who we are beneath all the layers, who we are beneath who we were told to be. And that's going to be so beautiful because who knows what you're capable of when you really delve beneath the layers, who knows how you might see yourself that you never imagined you were, was possible when you were listening to what other people told you, you were. Um, and then the beautiful thing too, is that it stops being about how polished it looks on the outside and it becomes more about how it feels on the inside. And The journey felt long, you know, I I eventually developed, I was eventually diagnosed with cancer after this, this commitment, but the, the practice continued where I realized, okay, I'm going to keep doing the selfies. I'm going to keep showing up raw and real and I'll learn from that. I'll learn from people's responses to me and I'll learn from how I respond to people's responses to me and I'll decide, you know, what is loving to me 
And that way I can set other people free to do what's loving to them. And again, love is an intelligence. It's not just the fluffy affection. It's, it's powerful stuff. It's the ability to be present with what is, including your deepest, darkest self. And I really, I think that we're afraid of witnessing that part of ourselves. We're afraid to see that, you know, what is that quote about when, you know, when you look into the abyss that you might become the abyss? I think love is more powerful than that. And, you know, what, what is the abyss anyway? The more of us that can be there for all those parts of ourselves, the more we're able to be there for other people. And there are a lot of people, as we can see, who are in the, you know, if you look on social media or the news, who really feel deeply unhappy. And I think a lot of that comes from you know, a deep need to be seen and to be accepted for who we are. So imagine if you could save a life, support someone through their deepest depression because you came with heart full of love that came from your practice of self-love in the moment that you were able to reach them just through your presence because even though you might not know what to do, you might have training, like you have the innate ability to love and that is subconsciously communicated through your actions, through your movements, through like the, the rhythm of your speech, all of that. And that's how it all begins. That shift to love yourself more deeply. And then the techniques will come, but it's that initial commitment. And you may be much, uh, you, you, you may have a fuller cup of love than I did when I started. No reason to wait for it to get completed. Keep loving yourself and see how that translates into deeper compassion for others, better ideas of what to do, how to show up in the world that's loving to yourself and to the people around you. So again, you can follow my journey and see, oh yeah, that's where I was going with the, the, um, the selfies. And then I started writing too. During cancer, I started MikoHarget.com. And that was to give myself permission to start writing. I ended up writing more on Facebook because I got more engagement and feedback. And that was really important during my journey. And it was important to be able to show up as raw and real as I felt was healing for me. And, you know, here's one thing is when you start to love yourself more deeply, not everyone is comfortable with it. And that's why it's even more important to keep loving yourself deeply and showing up honestly and though people who can the people who have the space to love themselves at that level will will show up in your life they will continue to be there and some people may come and go but the most important thing is that you're there for you and you have that capacity to be there for yourself first of all and then you'll be amazed how the resources that show up in your life or even the way that people who are already in your life start showing up differently for you and I think that's all for now I want to close with uh, if you like this video or you're interested in seeing more like, 
share, subscribe, and put something in the comments about how you feel about this. Um, does this go against everything that you've been taught? Does it click with you? What else would you like to hear me talk about? What are your concerns? And also, I want to say, if you need support, or if you're feeling like you can't handle the feelings that you're going through, it is also part of self-love and self-care to get help. It's not Self-love and care is not about doing it by yourself. It's about being there for yourself in whatever way is the most loving, whatever is going to help you to keep bringing your beautiful self to the world moment by moment. I will put in the descriptions below um, my blog link and also a number to call if you're feeling really distressed. And anything you're doing, check with your healthcare providers too. Check with your, you know, your licensed healthcare team, not only to help yourself, but also to start a conversation with them about all the self-care practices you're going to start doing. Because the more of us that are having conversations with our healthcare providers about everything that we're doing, you know, the more knowledge we'll gain, the more knowledge we'll share. Who knows? You might come across something very unique that they don't know about, but that if they knew about, then they could help somebody else with it. So make the commitment to love yourself more deeply. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day. And remember, you are awesome.